Today we're going to review the new Mortal Kombat film, available in cinema and for a limited time on HBO Max. And we're going to compare it to its predecessor from 1995 to see exactly which film did Mortal Kombat better. Major spoiler alert, if you have not watched the film yet, I am going to be talking about occasional plot points in a little bit more detail, so if you haven't seen it yet, go watch it, come back and enjoy this video. Otherwise, if you want, you can just skip to the time code on the bottom if you want to jump to the end for a mostly spoiler-free general summary of the film. So, let's get started. Anyone watching this, and anyone familiar with the 1995 film, who got ramped up at that opening sequence when the first thing we heard was, Mortal Kombat! New Line Cinema logo flying in, the Mortal Kombat metal logo flying around with the fire and in the titles. It set the tone. That sequence gave us a taste of things to come, and we knew immediately what kind of a ride and movie we were in for. This new movie does something similar. Now, while it doesn't have the, you know, the EDM, electronic dance music um, vibe and beat that the first film had, this film goes in a different direction. It's darker, it's grittier, it takes itself more seriously, and we see that and we feel that in the opening sequence in which we go into the background of Scorpion and Sub-Zero's conflict. And speaking of gritty, that's one of the main differences between these two movies. See, in 1995, it was criticized for not having the gore and fatalities that are prevalent in the games. But the problem though is, back in 95, who was the core demographic? 13, 14, 15 year olds, they couldn't go see an R rated film, so if they made that movie rated R, it would have tanked because the core audience couldn't see it. But fast forward to today, where we're like, what, 26, 27, something like that, years later, and that audience has grown up, so we can handle it now. So this movie, I think, made the right choice going in that direction. I mean, there's fatalities ripped right out of the game. It's gory, it's bloody, it does not hold back, and it makes absolutely no apology as to what it's referencing. So as far as tonality goes, I think both films do a fantastic job of, ex of setting up our expectations at the beginning and delivering and following through. So in terms of tone, both movies, this round is a draw. Story. Okay, when it comes to the story, let's let's call this what this is. We're talking about a movie based on a video game that was based on a series of movies. The original Mortal Kombat is kind of a blend between uh, Enter the Dragon, Big Trouble in Little China, and Bloodsport. It's all kind of mixed up into one. So made into a game, and now the movie's based on the game. So it gets kind of wiggy right there. And I, I want to point out that it was an interview with the director. He said that a lot of video game films... Um, they're afraid to commit. They're afraid to pull the trigger on keeping faithful to the source material. And when studios tend to break away from the source material, you're breaking that connection with the audience. So when I read this interview, I was very hopeful and thinking, yes, because that's what we need. And that's what the first movie was, and we needed a film that was faithful. I feel that maybe we have a different definition as to what faithful to source material means. There's a lot of changes that I felt were unnecessary. Character backgrounds were rewritten, some of them. The whole overall story doesn't quite congeal. It, it totally goes off the rails of the main plot of Mortal Kombat to the point where it almost serves as a spiritual prequel of sorts. I mean, you have this film that's built around this core concept of the fate of the Earth being determined in a tournament between two different realms. That is awesome, except when you consider the fact that this film never gets to the tournament. The story is more focused on stopping the bad guys who are trying to cheat from preventing the tournament from even happening to begin with. And that's just not what the game was. So they, I give them credit for trying to do their own thing, but in my opinion, they didn't retain enough of the original story to be all that faithful to Mortal Kombat. Far, far too much of the film went into justifying the character moves. It was all about the characters finding their arcana, their special powers when they get that Mortal Kombat dragon symbol, either by birthright or by defeating somebody who has a symbol. The thing with that though is, so much of the film is devoted to the main characters trying to learn their powers, it kind of feels Harry Potter-ish and starts to fly a little too close to Mortal Kombat Annihilation with the animalities. And it really isn't necessary. I mean, we're talking about a property of Mortal Kombat, you don't have to explain the magic to us. You don't have to justify it. We're going into it already accepting the fact that there is an interdimensional tournament with sorcerers and guys who can throw spears from their hands and freeze people. The magic's a given. We don't need to be spoon-fed or justified with a reason as to why it exists in their world. And when the special moves are done, they look like they're ripped right out of the game. I'll give them that credit. But to be totally honest, the movie feels a lot less of being faithful to the story than it does the instruction manual. It's just all about their special moves and it almost feels apologetic as to why those moves are in the film and realistically so they try to come up with this whole system to explain their powers. It's unnecessary. It's got shades of midichlorians in Star Wars. We don't need the magic explained. And just unfortunately it doesn't really 
dive into the mythos that much. I mean, those who know or are familiar with the entire Mortal Kombat storyline of the 11 main games, it has a pretty deep and intricate story. There's a lot they could have worked with. And this time around, this film pretty much feels like they gave us all the exposition that we need in that first title card. It doesn't really develop far past that. It's still a good martial arts film and I still recommend seeing it, but overall I think a lot of the meat is missing. So if you're a Mortal Kombat fan, you're not going to find the, the meat of the story that you would probably hope would be there. So I have to give this round to the 1995 film because they nailed it. They captured the whole feel and essence and story of the game as simple as it was. The special effects. All right, now when it comes to special effects, we have to be honest that when the first film came out in 95, CGI was in its infancy. I mean, we're only talking two years after Jurassic Park, and this movie had a very limited budget of about $18 million, and yes, while CG is new, they didn't have the Jurassic Park budget to back it up, so it doesn't look great. It has aged horribly, and it was kind of cheesy then, but now let's take a look at the new movie. The special effects are awesome. I would say they're on par with your average blockbuster film. The particle effects look gorgeous. The fire and the ice in particular, fantastic. The CG characters are good enough. The overall effects, and they hold up, and I think these are going to age a lot better than the original film. So this round is going to go hands down to the brand new movie. They score with special effects. Okay, let's talk about the combat, which is probably the main reason anybody that played the games to begin with and is really interested in the movie is all about the martial arts and the fighting. We have the 1995 film that really featured actors learning choreographed moves for the movie, whereas this time around, there are martial artists that can act and they're martial artists first. So there's a big difference in fighting capabilities. So to crown a victor of this round, I have to give it another draw, mainly because both films do such a great job staying within their own lane and the fighting and the action and the choreography totally fit within the context of what they set. Okay, the cast, I'm gonna to have to condense my thoughts here because I could easily talk for an hour just on this alone. For the most part, both films did a great job at staying faithful to the characters of the games. You have the first movie from 1995 that pretty much sticks to the cast of the first game, the main characters, with Katana and a cameo by Jax thrown in, and it fits really well within that. Those actors completely carry the film, there's great chemistry between the leads, we have a very charismatic villain in Shang Tsung, played by Kari Huyuki Tagawa, whose presence is felt in every scene that he's in, and then we have the animatronic Goro, which even though he's a machine, he's got a personality that comes across, he's pretty badass, and he's a really fun character. Now, this new film does a pretty good job with the lead characters. You know, Sonya, Jack, Scorpion Sub Zero, very faithful for the most part to their video game counterparts. And then we have Kano, who, while I feel that the casting was better in the original film, this Kano does a lot to carry the weight of this movie. And he does provide appropriate comic relief, even as dark and gritty when it is. He does provide some fun for this film. And this film, I think, handles the characters of Scorpion Sub Zero fantastically. Whereas in the 1995 film, they were pretty much, you know, just push off the side as henchmen characters. And in the, in the mythos of Mortal Kombat, their story is a huge part of the background. And we see that here. So we see them as human beings. They're not just palette swapped characters of each other. They have their own personalities. Their conflict comes across and it carries a lot of the emotional weight of the film. So I think Scorpion Sub Zero were fantastically represented in this movie. But the villains of Shang Tsung and Goro, I was a little bit disappointed in. Actor Chin Han does a great job at portraying Shang Tsung, but he doesn't have the presence. He doesn't, we don't see him really do anything. He's more of a sideline character. He barks orders and observes, but he really doesn't do much here compared to what they, you know, in the first film. And in Goro was, in my opinion, he looked great, but he was a disappointment. He kind of felt like they just threw him in there as another henchman. So he didn't have the weight. Neither of the main villains had the weight that they had in the original film. Where the first movie kept to the cast of the first game, this time around, we have kind of a handpick selection of characters from Mortal Kombat 1 through 5. So some of them kind of feel out of place and they kind of feel weird because where we should be in the story, they're not really coming into play yet in those forms. So it kind of felt like a lot of those characters were shoehorned in there, even though there are some fun nods to other characters we didn't get to see. So there's fan service, but sometimes I think they went a little bit too far with the fan service to include characters that didn't necessarily need to be in there. And this includes Cole Young. He's a brand new character and he serves as the connection for the audience and he's the main character of the story, which is a weird choice because in a world of Mortal Kombat where you have a plethora of characters to choose from, why make a brand new one? And I know the director said that the whole idea was to give an audience connection to a character who learned and we got to learn along with him the whole rules of the tournament. 
I get that. That's valid. But they did that with the first movie with Johnny Cage and Sonya. We learned through them, and there's enough characters to choose from we could have done that with. So it might not have been that necessary to create a whole new character. But that being said, um, the character felt underdeveloped. He didn't have a whole lot of weight that he carried for being the main lead. Uh, it was a little bit bland of a character, but he's got potential, and I would like to see him flesh out and maybe even see him show up in some future games. Sadly, characters like Natara, Melina, Reiko, Cabal, Reptile, and even, again, Goro, were just dropped in as henchmen, and they really fill the role, and they completely feel like they were just there for expendable characters, which just flies too close to Mortal Kombat Annihilation. So when it comes to the cast, the victory has to go to the original 95 film because even though they had less to work with, it was solid, they stayed within the context, the characters felt fully developed, whereas this time around we had some really well developed characters, but then we had a whole bunch that were just kind of there taking up space or just used as expendable characters and I think it kind of weighs it down because of that. Locations. Okay, this is one of my bigger gripes of the film too. To be quite blunt, the locations of the new film are dull and bland. The first movie takes place on an exotic island, just like the video game, and they built these fantastic set pieces, even on their limited budget, and those set pieces feel like they came from the universe of the game. You can go into just about any single fight in that first movie and take a screenshot, and it looks like it was ripped right from Mortal Kombat. This time around, the movie was filmed in Australia, and it looks like it was filmed in Australia. And absolutely no disrespect to Australia, I love you guys, but you don't look like Outworld. It doesn't feel like Shang Tsung's Island. And at no point did the set pieces really feel like they came out of that Mortal Kombat universe. Most of the fights take place in rocks, desert, or dirt. They do change it up sometimes. You know, we do get a trailer park, we get some urban settings, and we get a mobile home bathroom because that was everybody's favorite level from the game, right? And then there was one fight, one scene that did take place in the Mortal Kombat environment, and it was the pit. I saw it come on screen, I was like, oh, okay, there we go. It felt like Mortal Kombat. It looked great, beautifully designed. It had the whole, you know, the pit with the spikes in it. I was excited. I'm like, okay, here we go, Mortal Kombat. But they didn't use the pit. They had a fight on it, and they, they did a fatality, but nobody went down the pit. And that just seems like a weird choice because... That's the whole gimmick of that level in the game is that at the end the, the, the loser gets knocked down into the pit and they didn't even do that. Although the last scene with the frozen MMA ring was, was a nice touch. So overall locations, the victor, hands down Mortal Kombat 1 because it just feels and looks like Mortal Kombat. This looks like Mortal Kombat in Australia. When it comes to the music, I think that both films have great soundtracks that fit within their context. That first film, no one can deny that when you hear that Mortal Kombat yelled out with the cin uh, New Line Cinema logo, and then we saw the metal Mortal Kombat logo and the fire and that electronic dance music kicking in with Techno Syndrome, it was an experience in itself. And it set the tone for the movie. And that whole first movie's got like a rave, you know, electronic dance music vibe, but it worked for it at its time. That's not appropriate for this film. This film has more of a traditional score, which fits it much better. You know, it, it carries the emotion better, it sets the tone better, because the movie is darker and it's grittier. But that being said though, they still pay homage and respect to the, the Techno Syndrome original MK song, and we get a whole new pretty cool remix version for the end credits, and you hear little hints of it throughout the score. So I think both films did a tremendous job with the music. But even that being said, I still have to crown winner of the original film because the music was so iconic in that original movie that it was almost a character in its own right. Okay, so in a nutshell, Mortal Kombat 2021. Overall, I think it's a pretty fun martial arts film. It's got great fight choreography. It's got some pretty strong lead characters for the most part. Uh, the special effects are really impressive and they're fun to watch. So it's still a fun uh, viewing experience. But that being said, I do feel that it suffers from wasted characters, bland scenery, and it was a really good effort. And I still think it hits the dartboard, but it's more along the outer rim. It's just that for those who are Mortal Kombat diehard fans, I don't think they get into the mythos enough and there's not quite enough meat there to be satisfying in my opinion when it comes to the story and unfortunately in the end I think it comes down to feeling like what it actually is a stepping stone to set up a franchise. So when it comes to the victory, I have to crown the original 1995 film, mainly because I left that theater feeling pumped, I was excited, I felt like I'd watched a Mortal Kombat film. This time around, it was still a fun movie, it was still a fun experience, but I felt like I was watching Mortal Kombat characters in a generic martial arts film. It didn't quite capture the same spirit, so I have to give that to the first movie for being truer to the source and feeling more like a Mortal Kombat movie. 
but I do still recommend seeing this new one. It is a far, far cry better than Mortal Kombat Annihilation is by, by light years, but I just don't think it quite hits the elevation of where the first one hit. So what did you guys think of the film? If you haven't seen it yet, as of the release of this video, it's still available in theaters and also on a premiere on HBO Max until May 23rd. And it's my understanding that after that date, it'll go away, but then come back when it's released for home, home release. So if you haven't seen it, I do recommend it. It's still a fun martial arts film, but let me know what you think. Did you agree with my analysis or do you think I'm totally full of it? Either way, let me know in the comments down below. Thank you guys so much for watching. And if you're gonna talk about the plot, just put a spoiler alert. So just be courteous to others. So thank you so much. We'll see you next time.